I don't think too much will happen at Bali. It'll be part of a process that we've been moving towards for many years. This is held every year, this particular talks. And between times, there are additional talks held across the different country groupings. Uh, the real action will be probably 2009 in Copenhagen when we're getting close to having to have to have a decision to what happens after 2012 when Kyoto expires. Well, it's quite a complex set of issues. The developing countries do not have any binding commitments. The industrial countries who ratified Kyoto do have binding commitments. Most of those countries that took on targets haven't achieved them. Uh, the US and Australia haven't yet ratified the Kyoto Protocol, so you might argue that they're not part of the agreement process at the moment. But the real problem is that the Kyoto Pro Protocol is not really going to achieve what's needed and that's why we haven't got a consensus on how to move forward. Well, the basic flaw in the Kyoto Protocol is it's all about targets and timetables independently of the cost. And the re reality of the situation is countries will only take action if they are willing to bear a certain amount of cost relative to the benefits. If you don't know what the cost is, then you're not going to undertake the action. So what you need is an arrangement where the target is being approached but at the lowest cost possible. And once you bring the balance between cost and environmental outcomes to the fore of the agreement, then countries are more likely to take action. There are several problems with the Kyoto Protocol. One is that it starts from the top and works its way down. And so you reach an agreement and you force countries to participate. My view is that you don't do it that way. You start with individual countries taking their own actions and you act cooperatively. So you create a system where the countries feel it's in their own self-interest to participate. You have a set of rules, monitoring and enforcement standards, and you then cooperate, just like we do with the global monetary system. We've tried various of these centralised approaches in various areas, whether it's in uh, monetary economics, trade policy, a whole range of areas, and the centralisation approach doesn't appear to work effectively. What we need is a different strategy, which is really from the country level, with serious policies at the country level, coordinated to get a global system, not the other way around. And the second issue is the issue I raised before, is that what matters is not just the environmental outcome, but how expensive it is to reach that environmental outcome at a point in time. And I think you have to balance the environmental with the economic outcomes, or you won't get countries to effectively participate. But if you ask the de any developing country, whether it's China or India or Brazil, what is the key issue that they worry about? It's child mortality, it's infectious diseases, it's standards of living where people are living on a dollar a day. It's not climate change. So what you need to do is make them understand that eventually they will be willing to pay for climate change and climate change will have a big impact on these economies. And so they need to start moving in a way where they can balance all of their priorities, not just economic growth, but all their health and development priorities with the climate outcome for the global community. And that's the key. You don't tell them that they have to have a particular target that they hit by a particular date, which is the Kyoto strategy, because they will not do it. And they have said that they will not do it. And that's why we have a stalemate at the moment is that people keep pushing an approach which can't actually work for developing countries because it hasn't worked for industrial countries where the growth rates are so much lower and the capacity to do something is so much greater.